Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We have been studying these lessons on a prescription for revival. And the reason we have to study God's Word is we have to know how we are sure of our salvation. So this is the reason we are learning so much about the Word of God. Remember, the Word of God is the living Word. We need to understand it is a book of blood, and every word is sealed by the blood, because Jesus Christ is the living Word. So we come today with the greatest messages that we have ever taught. This is, I want to ask each of you, and I want you to answer this, only you can answer it. What is the meaning of the one body of Jesus Christ? And we have been teaching in the book of Hebrews before we started these lessons on the prescription for revival. So this is the most important lesson. You have to be born again by the Spirit of God before you can follow this prescription for revival. And as we learn these lessons and the principles that the Word of God has for us, then we can truly have revival, but not until. And when we're finished with these lessons, you're not going to have any doubt that we are the body of Christ and Christ is the head. We are the bride and he's the bridegroom. We must have these completely hidden in our hearts and never doubt the word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. The Word of God is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. So let's see what the Bible says about the one body, the only true church is the one body of Christ, and he is the head. So we're going to read, first of all, write these scriptures down. I know many of you follow along. Many of you write them down and study after we're off the air. So it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, every believer is a member of Christ's body, and as such, has a definite ministry. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 12. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink of one spirit. And then we see also in verse 27, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, as you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I want to read verse 20, beginning in verse 20. For all the promises of God are in 
yea, yea, and amen in him unto the glory of God by us. Now, he which established us with you in Christ. Now, after you become a child of God, you're one, you're in Christ, and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover, I call God for a record of all my soul, that to spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. By faith you stand. There is no promise in this book that you cannot appropriate by faith and receive the promises if you are a child of God. Every promise is ours as true believers. And we have a heavenly Father in heaven. We can call him Father because we become the sons of God. And this is one of the Bible verses that you learn so much and so many times. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It is believing and living by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you can appropriate these by faith. One body of Christ formed by one spirit. Now that's what we just read. So the meaning of this is in Ephesians, we have to go to Ephesians, and this is Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And now while we're here, we have to turn to Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verse 4 through 6. Now, these are the seven unities to be kept. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called, one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's baptism with water is the only baptism because we're baptized unto his death. And then we have water baptism that has no saving value at all, that just shows that we are identified with Christ. And when he was baptized, he did not have any sin to be cleansed. He was baptized to show us that this is his death, burial, and resurrection for us, and even our ascension, our rapture, because God opened up heaven when he was baptized. And then one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Only person that can call him Father is those that have received this gift that we're going to learn about in these lessons. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful we can come to the throne of grace. Now we have a heavenly calling a heavenly worship, a heavenly birth, divine conception. This is a heavenly divine message. And we're asking for every person that is hearing us today. If they do not know Christ today, their spiritual eyes will be opened and they will ask thee to speak send the Holy Spirit upon them with the blood of Jesus Christ and give us eternal life. It is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. It is the blood that purifies us and cleanses us from all sin. 
So as we study these lessons today on the body of Christ and the blood, we're asking that thou will give each of us the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of thee. Thy word says, I will give unto thee a mouth of wisdom, and all of your adversaries cannot gainsay nor resist. So we're thanking thee for victory today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this is the way that every person can understand the word of God and have faith in him. Not in any other person, not in any other church, not in any organization. It, faith has to have a foundation, and that foundation is the Word of God. Christ is the living Word. So the relationship, therefore, of all true Christians is that of fellow members. This is we enter into conversion by the spiritual baptism, baptizing us into one body, and consummated in the glory of heaven to which the church is destined. We are ready to be raptured. Matthew eighteen twenty. He is the center of the assembling, not forsaken the assembling of yourselves together with other fellow believers. And this is because the assembly of believers is the only ones that are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. This is a heavenly worship. That's why we come to the throne of grace, because Christ is our great high priest He's there with his own blood, and that's the only way we'll ever get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He also, the object of all of our hearts. Now, after you're born again, your heart is your intellect, your emotions, and your will. And that is how you know that your whole being is given to him when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is, he takes the blood and plants that into our soul. The death chamber that we have has to come alive, and this is what we're going to learn in these lessons today. And Romans 12, 4 and 5, and these are the lessons that you must study and study and understand what he is teaching us and how we are to live. Romans 12, verse 5, 4 and 5. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and all members have not the same office. Every one of us has a every person has a ministry that must be heavenly worship, worship in spirit and in truth, and this is what our calling is. We must have a, if it's just praying for me and my ministry, that is what God has called you to do, praying for one another is the highest and holiest calling that we have under heaven. And then we see in Ephesians 5.23, we also read, Christ is the head of the body of believers. And then we see also in Colossians 1.18. Colossians 1.18. Now, I know I will get you confused on all of these, but these are important. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things we might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So here we see what the body of believers is. Now are you born again? Do you understand this? Well, let's turn to Ephesians 2 now, 
and see what the Bible says about this one in Christ. And this is so amazing. The first thing you're going to learn is that Christ has no racism. We're going to learn that in these lessons. And then we see in Ephesians 2, now you need to hear these and read them and study them because they are important. He says that the Gentiles, well, let's start with verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men and is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon people. When we are born again, he indwells us, and we become one body. That in the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. We just read that in Corinthians. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. I can never understand how we can be so rich in Christ and live a life of poverty. We have everything in him. So Christ died on the cross now. You must understand this. Now the way was made open for man to become a trinity in unity. Just like this trinity here. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are equal. There's no division. In the body of believers, there can be no division. We are one, and he is the head. Only that which is a trinity is capable of fellowship with the Godhead, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There can be no division. So we have Jew and Gentile. And then we turn to the most amazing scripture that most of you have never heard. And we understand in these lessons, as we get into the body of Christ and what he has taught us in this book, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest subject of the Bible. It's all about him because that's the only way we can get to heaven. His person gives value to his shed blood. His blood is divine blood. It is the very life of the Christian faith. The Bible is a book of blood. The blood which is the very life and power of the gospel. The spiritual realm. We can partake of no spiritual life from this book whatsoever unless we do so through the precious divine blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the responsibility of each person in this world to apply his divine blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to his own soul that he may receive the breath of life. This is in Leviticus 17, 11. And then we see in John 17, 3, And this is life eternal, that ye may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So the blood as of his Son was sufficient to cover the sin of every individual in the world. Now when we turn to Acts, you're going to see what God has done with us in this world. And if you don't know these, you need to study this every day to see what he did when, when he created this world. 
Now, I want you to listen at Acts 17, and this is verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, and he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now, we worship with a body of believers wherever that is, if they are truly born again. Neither is worshiped with men's hands. No object, when you worship, you worship in spirit and in truth, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, breath, and all things. He giveth to all. All of you understand this. You're going to understand that the things that people are saying in this world do not follow God's principles to live by. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. For in him we live and move and have our being. This is Acts 17, verse 24 through 26. We are one, but the body, Adam's body of the ground, his blood was the gift for God is life and the author of all life. The whole plan of redemption rests upon the power of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without divine blood, there could be no atonement, and until the blood was presented, the holy law of God demanded justice and death for the sinner. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's why it takes the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all sin. The law called for justice and not mercy. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The law demanded perfection or death. God gave Moses the pattern of the tabernacle was indeed built on blood. The whole ritual was bathed in blood. God in his mercy gave the tabernacle and the altar and the blood so that a sinning people condemned by the law might have life through his divine blood. In Adam's blood, all die. In Christ, all live. So let's see what Hebrews 9 says. We have had this before, but we have to understand these truths because these are the most important messages for these days in which we're living because of all the false teachings. There are no churches unless they're born again. There are no religions whatsoever apart from the blood of Christ, no organizations. So he says, and the word says in Hebrews 9, 23, that Christ, neither by the blood of bulls and goats, they, they had this every day, the, law, the priest could make nothing perfect. Only Christ can make things perfect. The law could make nothing perfect. But Christ fulfilled the whole law. And, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. This is eternal. His blood is incorruptible. His blood is eternal. His blood is divine. His blood is sinless. It's overcoming blood and it's precious blood. And this is the most important thing for you to understand. We must see that it is not, you're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. By his own blood, he entered in once 
into the holy place. He had to have his blood before he could enter heaven. And he's there at the altar today as our great high priest. And his blood is at the altar, just like in the Old Testament. They had to have the blood when the high priest went in on the day of Passover, the day of atonement. He went in for himself first and then for his people. And he sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat in the presence of God. Jesus Christ is in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father, praying for us as our great high priest. And he is our great high priest today. And this is the most important thing for every true believer to know, that we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So we are thanking God for the blood, and it says in Hebrews 10, 12, and 14. Now these are important for you to listen to. By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And then verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now listen at this in verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, you see that was the sacrifice. His sacrifice was priestly sacrifice because that was the last sacrifice for the whole world because his sacrifice was a perfect sacrifice for sins forever and sat down at the right hand of God. Now, we can see all of these things that he's done for us. Let me ask you a question. Have you been born again? He says in Hebrews 2 verse 9. Now listen to this. Jesus made for a little time lower than the angels. He dies for man that he may lift men above angels into the family of God. And verse 9 of Hebrews. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, his sacrifice, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man.